We have another FRChem Primary Revision 5 Minutes at a Time video for you. Today it is taken from our webinar on head and neck anatomy and discusses the triangles of the neck. To watch more visit bromleyemergency.com or click on the link below. Moving on in the curriculum just to talk about the sternomastoid muscle. So here we can see in this picture the sternomastoid only on the left and then on the right hand side the sternomastoid and some of the other muscles have been removed to show the deeper layers. So the sternomastoid muscle, there's one on each side of course, and each muscle turns the head towards the opposite side. When both of them work together they flex the neck, they bend the neck forward, but because they attach to the back of the head, to the mastoid behind the pivot point, they actually extend the head so that the head looks upwards. The sternomastoids are innervated, of course, by the spinal, by the accessory nerve, the 11th nerve, one of the cranial nerves, and we test this in a clinical examination by getting the patient to turn the head to one side and toward to the other and putting the hand against the side of the head as a resistance to restrict the rotational movement. So we use it as a clinical neurological assessment. Now I just want to use this same picture here to talk about the triangles of the neck. Now the college curriculum says we should be aware of the triangles but that we don't need to learn them and their borders and their contents etc which is is great news I think for us. Just to quickly run through them though, you can see that behind the sternomastoid at its lowest limit, there's a triangle and then you've got the trapezius muscle. Well, that triangle is known as the posterior triangle of the neck, limited by the sternomastoid in the front and the trapezius at the back. In its base, it has the scalene muscles and it also has some lymph nodes in it and the omohyoid muscle crosses it. We don't need to know the details of this. But that's the posterior triangle. The anterior triangle is more complex. So the anterior triangle is the space in front of the sternomastoid in each, on each side. And although it looks like you could draw one triangle, in fact, anatomically, it's divided into four triangles. Two of them above the hyoid bone and two of them below the higher bone. We don't need to know about them, but the ones above are the submental and submandibular triangles, and the ones below are the muscular and the carotid triangles. But we, again, we don't need to know all that detail, but just it, the college says it's worth being aware of the triangles so that you're sure that you know the anatomy within them. Again, looking at the same picture, let's focus on the muscles that we can see within those anterior triangles. So again, the hyoid bone visible in the middle here, and we've got a number of muscles at the top and a number of muscles at the bottom. And they're different on each side because some of them have been removed on, the, on what is the patient's right side, the left side of this image. Essentially, there are four suprahyoid muscles and four infrahyoid muscles. The suprahyoids going from the hyoid up to the jaw, including, for example, the digastric, the mylohyoid, the genioglossus, those muscles are all involved in lifting the hyoid, lifting the larynx. They're all involved in the swallowing process and in helping to hold the esophagus open. And the college says we don't need to know any more than that. They are also, the digastric, for example, is involved in opening the mouth very wide. The infrahyoids, and again, there are four of these, we don't need to know the, the details. They're often referred to as the strap muscles. So the omohyoid is the one that runs from the hyoid down to the shoulder, down to the top of the scapula. But then there are others as well, the strap muscles. And these are involved in the opposite action, depressing the larynx, pulling the larynx down during the swallowing process. So the suprahyoid muscles tend to work earlier in swallowing and the infrahyoids after that. But that's really all that we need to know about these muscles.